Hi there, I'm Jono from Thermal Take Australia and this is our basic fittings guide for rigid tubing. In this video, I'll break down each type of fitting, what you'd use it for and how to install it in your loop. Starting off with an OD adapter. This is a very basic fitting with nothing too complicated going on. You simply push the tubing into the socket, the O-rings will form a tight seal around the tubing and that's all there is to it. It can take a bit of effort though, so don't worry if you have to use a little bit of strength. The biggest issues with OD adapters though is that often the rougher ends of your tubing can cut the interior O-rings. So ensure your tubing's edges are nicely beveled to avoid any damage. You can do this with a deburring tool. Next up is a C-Pro fitting. It may look like an OD adapter fitting just with some color, however, it's a huge step up from one. Let's take it apart so I can show you. An upgrade over the previous fitting, the C-Pro has a compression ring, which is what I'm taking off right now. It contains four O-rings. This one here, which sits on top, and then another three that are inside the fitting. This creates a far better seal overall. You'll notice that there's essentially three parts to this fitting. The base, the middle, and the compression ring which goes over the top to seal it all down. The base is what connects your hardware or blocks in your loop. The middle section meets flush with the base, and then the compression ring goes over the top, screws in, and creates a super tight seal. Here is an example of how you can install a C-Pro fitting and I'll use this water block here to demonstrate how to use it in a loop. I find it easier to install the o-ring that sits on top of the middle section over your tube first. Next, grab the compression ring and slide it over the top of the tube so it sits on top of the o-ring. Now you can slide the middle section onto the tube making sure that the concave side is what is facing the o-ring and not the flat side. Align the middle section so it's flush with the end of the tube, pull the o-ring and the compression ring down and place it on top of the base, which in this case is screwed into the water block. Then begin to screw the ring into the thread on the base. Overall, it provides a super tight seal and it's much more effective than a simple OD fitting. The first of the angled fittings I'll show you today is this dual compression 90 degree fitting. If you prefer straight lines or if you want to avoid doing a complete 90 degree bend with tubing, then these can quite easily bail you out. Like the C-Pro fitting, this one also has a compression ring on the outside to help create a tight seal, along with, as you'll see, the three included O-rings. The way it works is that there's a compression ring on the outside of each end. Unscrew the compression ring, slide it onto your tubing, push your tube into the socket, and then thread the compression ring over the top of your socket. Depending on the look you're going for, these can keep all of your angles looking sharp as it'll often be a tighter angle than your freehand 90 degree bends. This next fitting is also a 90 degree fitting, and while I wish it had a cooler name, it's called a 90 degree adapter fitting. It's a little different than the previous 90 degree, and the main noticeable difference is this one has a male end and a female end. While it doesn't provide as much of a wide radius as the dual compression fitting does, this fitting is ideal to use in a tighter space where you might struggle to bend a tight enough curve. While all of the previous fittings are intended to connect to rigid tubing, these are specifically designed to attach to hardware in your loop and other fittings. As an example, I'll show you how you can use it with a water block. You begin by screwing in the male side into the water block. Once that's done, you can either connect a fitting that will connect to tubing, like a C-Pro or an OD fitting, or you can use an extender, which I'll show you a little later. Next is a male to tube 90 degree fitting. This is quite similar to the dual compression fitting with the sides that connect to the tubing being the same. The other side though, the male quarter inch thread, connects to your hardware ports. So this means that unlike with your male and female end fitting, you can connect your tubing straight into it without the need of an additional C-Pro or OD fitting first. These are extenders. 
they come in sizes from 10 up to 30 millimeters and in three different types. One of the main reasons to use an extender would be to help make the tube's path in your loop easier. As easier is subjective, it could mean different things for different people. So I'll give you an example of what I use them for. For instance, if you have your water block located on your motherboard here, and you wanted to reach your radiator port over there, it would require an odd type of bend to join the two. However, if you use an extender first, it means that you can then screw in your fitting, meaning your tube will line up easier with your port, and you'd only need to do a 90 degree bend, keeping the loop and your bending simple. Next is a drain port. A drain port isn't necessary, however, it's definitely a fitting worth investing in. The way it works is that there's a little switch that when you twist it, it opens and closes the valve inside. The way it's connected is a little tricky as both ends are female, so for this, you'll need a male end to screw in. Like for example, this 90 degree angle fitting. Ideally, you'd want this to be at the bottom of a loop, like your radiator, which will help drain it. Finally, this is your flow indicator. This is basically used to show that there's flow and pressure in your loop. It has a little twisty doohickey thingy inside. I seriously don't know what else to call it. You need a male port to insert into this fitting so you can easily use an OD adapter or what I recommend a C Pro fitting and then easily attach your tubing into it. And that's it. I've broken down just a handful of the plethora of fittings you can use to make your life easier when designing your custom loop. I really hope this helps you in building your next amazing water cool creation. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you've got any questions or comments or what you'd like to see next in an upcoming guide or tutorial, then drop that down below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.